Are you struggling to come up with original content week in and week out? Start a podcast, interview your ideal clients, let them talk about what they care about most and never run out of content ideas again. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to the B2B Growth Show, a podcast dedicated to helping B2B executives achieve explosive growth. Whether you're looking for techniques and strategies or tools and resources, you've come to the right place. I'm James Carberry. And I'm Jonathan Green. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to the B2B Growth Show. We are here today with Elle Wolf. She is the VP of Marketing at Lookbook HQ. Elle, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I am uh, really excited to chat with you today, Al. I've actually been, uh, I've been hearing a lot of people talk about Lookbook HQ in some of the LinkedIn posts that I have been sharing. And so, uh, so getting to talk to you is something uh, I'm really excited about. But before we dive into the topic today, we're going to be talking about the problem with marketing success metrics in 2017. But before we get into that, I'd love to have you explain to our listeners what is Lookbook HQ? What are you and your team up to over there? Sure. So we are a uh, growth stage company based out of Toronto. I actually personally sit uh, outside of Boston, Massachusetts. I am an honorary Canadian, not a true Canadian. (laughs) And we are an intelligent content platform. So basically, we help marketers to always deliver the next best content asset uh, and guide their buyers uh, on their buying journey. You know, we believe that marketers can generate really great outcomes for themselves, for their companies, and for their audiences. So we do this by making it easier for marketers and their audiences to simultaneously achieve their goals. And that is, you know, people consuming the right content at the right time and marketers measuring the truth behind their marketing is working. So we build really easy to implement solutions for marketers that deliver amazing results year after year. And uh, part of that is is what we're going to talk about today, which is helping them to understand the truth behind marketing metrics, getting um, deeper insights into how people are consuming marketing. I love it. I love it. So to dive right into that, L, I, I guess we'll, we'll start just by talking about kind of what marketers are doing today. What are they doing to look at their success metrics in, in 2017? Sure. So if you think about sort of where we've come from as B2B marketers, you know, I, I worked at Eloqua for a long time on the demand generation side and, you know, 10, 12, 15 years ago, it was revolutionary, this idea that we were going to be able to sort of track what people were doing online. People were calling it digital body language, you know, online behavior. We could, you know, drop cookies and sort of see where people were going. And suddenly, you know, the buying process was happening online. And the fact that we had some insight into what people were doing was, was empowering both marketers and salespeople when suddenly, you know, the sales process started to, to, you know, get sort of taken away from the salesperson. So, so we had all of this great insight and, and how marketers were measuring that was in the form of clicks and downloads and, you know, conversions, form fills, this kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So that has been the primary way that we've been measuring marketing success. It's, you know, how many people uh, clicked through on a thing. That's a, a form of success. How many people attended a, a webinar? How many people downloaded a thing, right? Yep. There's a lot of hope built into those metrics, right? Okay. What we can't see with those metrics is what happened after they clicked. We don't actually know if the marketing was actually consumed, if the buyer was actually educated. So that is really how people are doing it today. That's how we've been doing it, you know, for, for quite a long time. Yeah. And, and so obviously the problem with that being that that we don't know what's happening post click. We don't know if they're consuming that content. So why do you think we're stuck there in that kind of predicament of, of measuring the action that they took leading to what would, you know, what we would hope would be them consuming the content, but not actually being able to measure whether or not they've consumed it or not? I actually think there's a couple things. I mean, I think, first of all, we've been sort of painted into this corner because, you know, we all sort of put all our eggs in one basket, which was marketing automation. We all sort of ran to that side of the boat and said, okay, marketing automation is going to be the salvation. And we're all going to, we're going to build our, our, you know, our B2B marketing process around this. And we're going to build these, you know, landing pages and forms. And this is how we're going to convert. And we're also going to assume that marketing success is based on these conversion points, right? And, I think we got away from 
what our jobs as marketers really is. So we really need to get back to the fact that our jobs as marketers is educating buyers. It's actually educating them so they become influenced, so they become educated, so they become qualified to enter into a sales process. And what we've started to do is sort of like gamified the whole thing. It's like what we what we're trying to do is get them to click, get them to score a lot of points, get them to a point where we say, yeah, that's good. Okay, pass them over to sales. And really all you're doing is handing over a person who potentially clicked on a lot of things. Because again, you don't as a marketer have insight into did it was there any value to that click? What was the quality of that click? Did they actually are they actually educated? Did they actually do anything? Did they consume anything? Are they actually educated? Yep. So um, and now there's, you know, a lot of people are talking about intent and, you know, you can see what people, but intent is just another form of clicking. It's like, oh, we can see what the people are clicking on information like this. Um, it still is divorced from consumption of information. And so I think part of it is, you know, just lack of a better alternative, yeah. but also just, you know, we've kind of gotten in the mindset that instead of, you know, as marketers, our job is to educate buyers as marketers, we've kind of have gotten to this place where our job has become to, to sort of tally points and we've got a, we've got to sort of tip the scale back in the other direction. So what's, what's the alternative then to this? What can we do to kind of get over this hump that the corner that we've painted ourselves in? Well, I mean, it's it's exactly that, right? I mean, if if we assume that as marketers, our job is to to really sort of educate buyers and to separate those people who are truly doing research, right? They are showing an intensity around, you know, the buying process. They are consuming, like, so I, I always use this analogy. So last last summer, uh, I had to buy a new car because my husband uh, took my car out and let's just say it didn't come home with him. <laughs> And so I, I needed a car I was, and it was like I, mission critical. I have little kids, like I had to have a car. And so I didn't, you know, every Thursday at 1 PM, click on an email from a car dealership and like read a little bit of information. Mm -hmm. I sat down, you know, after I put my kids to bed and I spent about two hours, like reading every piece of information I could get my hands on about the cars that I was thinking of buying. Cause I had to, I had to buy. So people who are about to buy something, that is the behavior that they demonstrate, right? Yeah. You don't consume a ton of content because you're not going to buy something, right? Yeah. So what we need to do is be able to both facilitate that behavior or make it easy for buyers who want to consume a lot of content. We need to get out of their way and, and deliver content in a way that makes it easy for them. We also need to be able to identify when that's happening. That's the consumption behavior you're looking for. Um, and so if we can, you know, give, empower marketers to, identify those consumption metrics, separate those people from all those other people who are just clicking. I mean, the problem is in your marketing automation platform or, or however you're, you know, whatever you're running your marketing on today, if you've got two people who are clicking on lots of stuff and one is spending a ton of time pouring over this information and the other is, you know, it's, it's going to die on their, on their desktop, much like my desktop looks yeah. like, um, right. There's tons of great intentions to read that information, but it's not actually happening. Your sales team absolutely wants to talk to the person who's spending the time with the content because that's a real buyer. And so that's the consumption behavior we need to zero in on and we need to be able to action and, you know, intelligent content delivery, um, because of the way that we deliver the content, we're able to track the the number of assets consumed and the time spent with that content and actually now append that information to the stuff we've always tracked, the clicks and the form fills and the downloads and all of that stuff. So you get a heightened sense of is there actual consumption happening behind the click? Got it. And so once you know that there's consumption behind the click, at that point is when you hand it over to sales, not just when you know when the form has been filled out or when the when the click has happened but you're actually waiting until after the content has been consumed before you pass that over Am I understanding that right? Yeah, you are. And I mean, what I would say is it's up to you how you want to handle that as a marketer. I mean, we see people who are sort of, you know, treading into this new world and with different levels of, of caution and some are completely, you know, are, are it's, it's become a, a somewhat of a religious experience. And they're saying, you know what, if there's not a serious level of consumption, we're not going to pass it over at all. They're seeing such unbelievable, you know, increase in 
whether it's funnel conversion, um, you know, sales acceptance, all, all of the metrics you're looking for that they're unwilling now to pass, you know, what, whatever you want to call it, lead, lowercase l leads that don't meet this level of sales readiness. Um, some people are, are using it as a, yet another sort of dimension to score leads and sort of fast track or action these buyers in a different way. You know, we, we call them internally, we call them, you know, our fast moving buyers, those people who demonstrate this type of behavior, we want to treat them differently. We want to, we want to talk to them faster. We want to move them through. And our sales team does too, because guess what? They move through the, the funnel two and a half times faster. They command much higher ACVs. And it's not because we're doing anything magical here. All we're doing is we're identifying real buyers. We're separating yeah. the actual buyer, the person who has a need to buy a car tomorrow versus the guy who's like, oh, I love BMWs. Maybe someday I'll get one. Oh, I'll click on that ad, right? And I, and we're yeah. and we're just tallying up the points. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so it's just all we're trying to do is both facilitate that natural behavior of a buyer who who you know has something they need to buy, and and then identify when that behavior is occurring so that sales can take action on it. And it's it makes perfect sense, and it's just the next evolution of of where we need to go in B two B marketing. So, Al, have you found uh, that there's a particular type of content that that is getting consumed more more frequently than others is it is it video is it is it case studies is there is there a particular type of content that you guys are seeing on the back end obviously having you know lots of clients and lots of different industries using your product uh, is there anything standing out to you as far as the content that actually gets consumed i will say the thing that you expect that i will say it's it's very unique to you know, buying stage or stage of the funnel type of buyer type of solution. There's a couple neat things you can do when you deliver your content this way um, for known buyers. So if I know exactly who I'm targeting with this content, um, so it's someone in my database, I'm trying to move them from point A to point B, I can curate an experience. I can say, I want you to, to move you through. I want to take you from this high level video to this, you know, analyst report to this customer story to this. And I can, I can, you know, put these in this sequence and try to move you through these pieces of content. You can also, if I don't know who you are, and perhaps you came, you were out in the wild, you clicked on a display ad, um, or you came to my website and I had no idea, we can power content recommendations with an algorithm where we say, for people like you and the relationship of these content assets, we know that, you know, this is the likely series of content that is going to make you stick around, you know you know, our hypothesis here is that attention is really hard to get when you get someone to click on your ad, to click on your email, to convert on, you know, X, Y, Z offer. We let them disengage so easily from our content. Why don't we make it a little bit harder? Why don't we deliver us? I mean, if you think about how digital pub publishers keep you engaged, right? Netflix, ESPN, you know, YouTube, yep. you can go there and squander an hour because they're using all of this great data to say people like you, when they click on this thing, they will tend to stick around for three hours if I serve this, this, and this. And we believe B2B marketers should do the same thing with their content, right? So um, we're powering a lot of different ways for marketers to be able to do that. And when they do, they can keep buyers much more engaged. And so it has less to do with the type of asset and more to do with the circumstances under which they're serving it, right? You know, is it an unknown user who shows up on my website and clicked on this first and therefore I'm going to serve them this, this, and this. And so using all this great information that we have, um, both about the, the assets you're trying to serve, um, the type of people you've served them to in the past, the type of person you're serving it to now, um, we can, we can, you know, serve up a great series of, of content recommendations that is likely to keep that person engaged and clicking and reading and, and self-educating. That makes perfect sense. El, this, is, this has been fantastic. If there's somebody listening to this and they want to dig more into this, they have some more questions, what's the best way for, for them to uh, stay connected with you uh, and also learn more about Lookbook HQ? I mean, it's the, it's the old-fashioned stuff, right? You can uh, visit lookbookhq.com. Uh, we have a great set of resources. You can experience uh, Lookbook HQ content experiences in action on our website. Uh, you can always find me on Twitter, LH Wolf, and I'm readily accessible on LinkedIn. I'm always happy to connect with fellow marketers I'm out there on the speaking circuit quite a bit. I'll be talking at uh, the MarTech show in Boston this summer and at Content Marketing World and always happy to connect with, with fellow marketers. Awesome, Elle. Well, thank you so much for your time today. This has been fantastic and I really appreciate it. My pleasure. 
you're a B2B marketer, we want to feature you on sites like the Huffington Post, Social Media Examiner, and Chief Marketer. Every week, we send out a question related to B2B marketing. We use the responses to those questions to fuel the content we write for really popular websites. So head over to sweetfishmedia.com slash questions and sign up today. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.